Picture this, a dimly lit room, the faint hum of an old projector, and the anticipation that swirls in the air as the opening credits roll. It's the year 1957, and you're about to embark on a cinematic journey like no other. You've stumbled upon Plan 9 from Outer Space, a movie that would go down in history as one of the most gloriously notorious pieces of cinematic oddity ever created. Perhaps, like many, your first encounter with this cinematic marvel was a perplexing mix of disbelief and fascination. As the extraterrestrial invaders awkwardly descended from their saucers, held together by strings that were far too visible for comfort, you might have found yourself questioning the very nature of filmmaking. But therein lies the charm of Plan 9 from Outer Space, a movie so bad it's brilliant, so campy it's captivating. Do you recall the moments that made you cringe, laugh, or gasp in sheer disbelief? The cardboard tombstones wobbling in the breeze, the unforgettable dialogue delivered with utmost seriousness, or the peculiar resurrection of the dead. Plan 9 had it all, a delightful mishmash of science fiction and horror, brought to life by a director with boundless enthusiasm and a shoestring budget. Now, let's delve into some random facts about this cinematic gem. Did you know that the film's original title was Grave Robbers from Outer Space, only to be later changed to the more enigmatic Plan 9 from Outer Space? Or that the legendary Bela Lugosi, who passed away during production, was replaced by a chiropractor who bore no resemblance to the iconic actor? So, my fellow cinephile, as we venture deeper into the eccentric world of Plan 9 from Outer Space, brace yourself for an exploration of its quirks, its legacy, and the cult following that has endured through the decades. After all, sometimes it takes a spectacular disaster to create something truly unforgettable. And now, without further ado, let's lift the curtain on this cinematic oddity. Plan 9 from Outer Space, released in 1957, is often hailed as one of the worst movies ever made. Directed by the legendary Ed Wood, the film tells the story of extraterrestrial beings who resurrect the dead to thwart humanity's destructive use of atomic power. Iconic characters include the enigmatic alien leader, Vampira as the seductive ghoul, and Bela Lugosi in one of his final roles. The film is notorious for its low-budget production, laughable special effects, and wooden acting. Despite its critical failure, Plan 9 from Outer Space has gained a cult following over the years due to its unintentional humor and charming ineptitude. Its unique style, characterized by cheesy dialogue and cardboard gravestones, has endeared it to fans of so bad it's good cinema. Its influence on popular culture is undeniable, inspiring parodies, references, and even a 1994 biographical film about Ed Wood, directed by Tim Burton. Plan 9 stands as a testament to the enduring appeal of cinematic eccentricities, and its legacy lives on in the realm of cult classics. In the 1957 movie Plan 9 from Outer Space, some interesting behind-the-scenes details shed light on its production. One notable fact is that the flying saucers featured in the film were not makeshift props like paper plates or hubcaps, as some speculated. Instead, they were 148th scale flying saucer plastic model kits produced by toy manufacturer Paul Lindbergh. One of these saucers was modified with a wooden block to create the square base scene when the flying saucer lands in the graveyard. Additionally, footage from the same shoot that captured Bela Lugosi's performance in Plan 9 from Outer Space was originally intended for another film called The Ghoul on the Moon. However, when director Edward D. Wood Jr. tried to retrieve this footage, he discovered it had been ruined. As a result, plans for the new movie were scrapped. A lesser known detail is that J. Edward Reynolds, who led the group of Baptists that financed the film, and associate producer Hugh Thomas J.R., actually appeared in the film as the Gravediggers. These intriguing behind-the-scenes tidbits add layers of curiosity to the production of Plan 9 from Outer Space, a movie that has gained notoriety for its campy charm and cult following. Plan 9 from Outer Space, the cult classic in 1957, a peculiar sci-fi movie called Plan 9 from Outer Space hit the screens. This film is famous for several reasons. The filming location, much of the filming took place at an independent soundstage called Quality Studios, located on Santa Monica BLVD, near Western Ave. The entranceway is situated next to the Harvey Hotel. 
While it hasn't been a soundstage for many years, the building still exists, leaving a piece of cinematic history in its wake. The title change, originally, the film was titled Grave Robbers from Outer Space. However, it's said that the Baptist ministers who financed the picture objected to this title. So, Edward D. Wood Jr., the director, changed it to Plan 9, a decision that would cement the film's reputation in the annals of cult cinema. Cult status, Plan 9 from Outer Space might not have been a box office hit, but it achieved cult status over time. Entertainment Weekly even ranked it at 12 in their top 50 cult films of all time list. This is a testament to its enduring popularity among fans of unconventional and low budget cinema. In a nutshell, Plan 9 from Outer Space is a film that defied conventional norms, both in its production and reception. From its unique filming location to the title change and eventual cult status, it's a movie that has left an indelible mark in the world of cinema. The Making of Plan 9 from Outer Space A quick look behind the scenes in 1957, the infamous movie Plan 9 from Outer Space made its way to the silver screen. While the film is often remembered for its low-budget charm and campy style, there are some interesting tidbits about its creation that are worth exploring. The rushed screenplay, one intriguing aspect of the movie's production is that the screenplay was written in less than two weeks. This lightning fast pace is a testament to the urgency with which the film was made. Director Edward D. Wood Jr. wasted no time in crafting the story, which added to the movie's unique charm. It's not every day you see a script come together so quickly in the world of cinema. A quirky gun scene, contrary to popular belief, there's a scene in the film where a detective points his gun at himself several times. This might seem like an odd mistake, but it was actually deliberate. The actor behind the detective wanted to test whether Edward D. Wood Jr. would notice this peculiar choice. To everyone's surprise, Wood didn't catch the mistake, and it made it into the final cut of the film. This anecdote adds an interesting layer to the movie's reputation for its quirky and unintentionally humorous moments. Mela Nermi's regal presence in Plan 9 from Outer Space, Mela Nermi portrayed a female ghoul with a regal presence and theatrical mannerisms. Her performance evoked the style of silent film actresses, with Theta Barra serving as her main influence for the part. This choice contributed to the film's unique atmosphere, adding a touch of classic Hollywood glamour to the otherwise campy sci-fi narrative. While Plan 9 from Outer Space may not have achieved critical acclaim upon its release, it has become a cult classic over the years, thanks in part to these behind-the-scenes quirks and choices that set it apart from other films of its time. In the world of filmmaking, sometimes the most unexpected details and decisions can lead to a lasting legacy. Plan 9 from Outer Space is a prime example of how a rushed screenplay, a quirky gun scene, and a touch of old Hollywood charm can make a film unforgettable. In 1957, Edward D. Wood Jr. took on the audacious task of creating an epic film with a shoestring budget. His ideas often exceeded the financial constraints, but he pressed on regardless. One of the notable challenges during the production of Plan 9 from Outer Space was the scar worn by actor Tor Johnson. This scar had to be moved daily as it caused severe skin irritation. Meanwhile, actress Mela Nermi, who was paid a modest $200 for her appearance in the film, insisted that her character remain mute because she didn't care for the dialogue. Plan 9 from Outer Space is renowned for its low-budget charm and its status as a cult classic. Despite its shortcomings, the film has endured as a testament to the determination and creativity of Edward D. Wood Jr. and his team. The making of Plan 9 from Outer Space in 1957. The world saw the release of the infamous movie Plan 9 from Outer Space. This low-budget sci-fi film, often considered one of the worst ever made, has its own share of interesting behind-the-scenes stories. One such story involves Mela Nermi, known as Vampira, who portrayed a vampire in the film. According to Nermi, she would get into her vampire makeup and costume at her home. Afterward, she'd hop on a bus to the Quality Studios soundstage where her scenes were filmed. This unconventional commute to work was just one of the many quirks associated with the making of Plan 9 from Outer Space. Another interesting tidbit about the film involves the police cars and uniforms used in it. The company behind the production managed to obtain these props through Tor Johnson's son, Carl Johnson. Carl was an officer in the San Fernando Police Department and played an uncredited role in the film. 
His connections were instrumental in acquiring the necessary police gear for the movie. Plan 9 from Outer Space had its share of setbacks, one of which was finding a distributor. Shot in late 1956 and copyrighted in 1957, the film struggled for nearly three years to find a company willing to distribute it. This extended period of uncertainty reflects the film's tumultuous journey from production to release. While Plan 9 from Outer Space may not have achieved critical acclaim, it has carved out a unique place in cinematic history due to its quirks and idiosyncrasies both in front of and behind the camera. As we bid adieu to the otherworldly realms of Plan 9 from outer space, we find ourselves not merely spectators but participants in a cosmic odyssey that defies the bounds of cinematic convention. This 1957 masterpiece, renowned for its audacious charm and, some might say, unique approach to storytelling, has forged an enduring connection with aficionados of the silver screen. But what does this interstellar excursion mean to you? Does it evoke nostalgic memories of late night viewings with friends, each line of dialogue celebrated with uproarious laughter? Or perhaps it's the indomitable spirit of Ed Wood and his dedicated cast that inspires you to pursue your own creative endeavors, regardless of the odds. Plan 9 from Outer Space is more than just a film. It's a portal to our shared cinematic past, a testament to the enduring allure of the bizarre and the enduring power of storytelling. It beckons us to explore the outer limits of our imagination and reminds us that even in the face of adversity, we can create something truly out of this world. We invite you to share your cherished memories, quirky anecdotes, or profound insights about this iconic movie. Let's celebrate its quirks, its campiness, and its everlasting impact on the world of cinema. Thank you for taking this journey through the cosmos with us and for sharing your thoughts and experiences. Your unique perspective adds to the rich tapestry of Plan 9 from outer space enthusiasts worldwide. Keep the conversation going and let the love for this cinematic gem continue to shine brightly in the night sky. Until our paths cross again in the world of words and wonder, farewell, and remember, every story, no matter how unconventional, deserves its place in the stars. Warmly.